What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is a series where I go into great detail with all of the stats as well as some excellent attachment combinations for every gun in Modern Warfare 2. And in today's episode, we're not actually covering a gun, we're gonna be covering the crossbow that was added in Season 2. And let's just dive right into its one-shot kill zone. And it turns out with the crossbow, it's gonna be a one-shot kill anywhere but the legs. And when it comes to the range on this, I was unable to find a drop-off point where it wouldn't get a one-hit kill to the torso. I'm not saying there isn't a drop-off that exists, but I tested all the way out to 75 meters and I was still getting a one-shot kill even when it was hitting right around the groin area. And once you get out to those extreme ranges, no matter what attachments you put on, you are going to see a decent amount of inherent inaccuracy with the bolt anyway. So at least in practical terms, you don't really have to worry about any damage drop-offs. You just have to know that you don't want to be hitting leg shots. As for our rate of fire on this, it's incredibly slow at 24 rounds per minute. However, if you use the fast hands perk and if it's active on your class setup, it will increase your rate of fire up to 30 rounds per minute because with this crossbow, every time you fire, it's almost like you're firing a full magazine. So it's actually a reload between each shot rather than a coded rate of fire value. And this also means our reload time between each shot without fast hands is 2.5 seconds. Whereas with fast hands, it's 1.99 seconds. But then after that, let's move into our handling stats and our aim down sight time is 350 milliseconds, which is pretty slow. Although for a one shot kill marksman rifle, it's not that bad. And then our sprint out time is gonna be 270 milliseconds for our standard sprint out time and 390 milliseconds for our tactical sprint out time. Now finally, for the base stats, before we get into attachment comparisons, we have our mobility stats. And when it comes to this, our base movement speed is right around average for a marksman rifle at 4.56 meters per second. Then our sprint speed is a little bit better than average at 5.87 meters per second. And then finally, our aim walking movement speed is again, a bit above average for marksman rifles at 2.26 meters per second. Next up, let's talk about accuracy with the crossbow because with this, just like with slug shotguns, for instance, we do have a little bit of aim down sight spread. And what this means is even if you're perfectly on target, the bolt doesn't necessarily go exactly where your point of aim is. There's a little bit of randomness coded in there as well as a little bit of bolt drop depending on your velocity. But as you can see here at 20 meters, this is the amount of spread that you could see. And keep in mind, I was mounted for these tests to make sure that this wasn't any of the idle sway or anything. I was in a perfectly stable position firing at the exact same point of aim every single shot. And this is the amount of spread that we're seeing. Now, if you are aimed center mass on an enemy player, this should still generally be a hit at 20 meters. It probably won't be much of an issue for you. But as you start to stretch those ranges out, or if you use attachments that decrease your bolt accuracy, this may end up being a problem for you where you feel like you're perfectly on target, but you're still missing the shot. Now with this, I also wanna do a comparison with any of the attachments that directly alter our bolt accuracy. And these are gonna be the arms as well as the cables. And in the description, only two out of the four arms state that they improve our accuracy, although that definitely doesn't appear to be the case. In fact, that SO Momenti arm gives us one of the best accuracy values out of any of these, and yet it isn't even stated anywhere in the description, so that's a nice little bonus with that one. But you can also see that 16 strand cable really nicely helps with our accuracy. It really tightens that grouping up. And also, of course, the Thunder 200 pound arm. This is the one that gives us the most accurate shots. So this is a really important element that you definitely wanna be aware of. However, I also wanted to include velocity values here and keep in mind since it is traveling so slow and I don't wanna do like an average velocity over distance, it is really difficult to calculate that perfectly. Instead, I'm just gonna do a percentage change from the base velocity with each of these attachments. And as we can see that SO Momenti gives us the biggest boost to our velocity at 21% and the 28 strand cable will also give us quite a nice boost here at 16%. It's also worth noting that any of the bolt attachments you can use outside of the base ones will be reducing our velocity values by 9%. And before we dive into more details with those different bolt attachments, I just wanna quickly show aim down sight improving attachments as well. I'm gonna have a look at the arms, the lasers, as well as the stock attachments here. And as we can see, the arm that helps the most with aim down sight time is gonna be the last one, that Quill XC 100 pound arm. When it comes to lasers, the best ones for aim down sight time are gonna be the AccuShot 5 milliwatt, as well as the VLK Laser 7 milliwatt. And then finally for our stock attachments, the Speed Track Echo is the only one that helps our aim down sight time. And with that, let's move into the different bolts that you can use with the crossbow. The first one that we have to choose from is the Bright Blaze 20 inch bolts. And these are thermite tipped bolts, so they basically just have a mini thermite attached to them. And with these, if you get a direct impact, even on the foot of a player, it's guaranteed now to be a one hit kill, even against players that are using the bomb squad perk. It'll take a little bit longer to burn them to death, but they will definitely die if you hit them directly. 
But on top of that, even if you miss your target, there is a small area of effect damage radius. It's only about 1.8 meters though, and it's not likely you're gonna be getting too many kills with this area of effect damage. It's also worth noting you do lose some bolt accuracy with this. It is a bit difficult for me to test that properly since it has that burn effect on the wall. So I can't plot out the exact placement of each bolt. Just know that it is going to be harming your accuracy. However, it's also worth noting these thermite tip bolts can be good against certain kill streaks. In fact, with a UAV, if you manage to hit that UAV, it will be a one hit kill on that. However, it does take some practice to get that lead just right so you can hit it consistently. Same thing goes with the counter UAV, although it does take a little while for the burn damage to end up killing it. It still only takes one bolt total. And then I also wanted to test against a VTOL, and it turns out it will take six shots against a VTOL to take it down, which is honestly not a great option for shooting it down. You're much better off with an LMG or battle rifle with incendiary rounds. So that's the thermite bolts. Now let's move into the explosive tip bolts. And with these ones, once again, if you hit somebody in the leg with it, it won't kill them instantly, but when the bolt explodes, it will be a guaranteed kill on enemy players, even if they're using the bomb squad perk. And on top of that, you can deal damage to enemy players if you miss your target, or if there's a second player that's standing right next to their teammates. There is some explosive damage from this, but the radius on it is very, very small. You basically have to be standing directly on top of that bolt in order to die, and that's assuming you don't have bomb squad. If you do have bomb squad and full health, a single bolt that doesn't hit you directly will not be able to kill you. Now, just like with Thermite, I wanted to see how this impacted some of the kill streaks. And once again, with a UAV, if you can hit it, it will be a one hit kill with this bolt. And it's the same story with the counter UAV, although it's worth noting, this will actually destroy that counter UAV noticeably faster than the Thermite. And then when it comes to the VTOL, it's actually gonna take you nine shots total to take a VTOL down. So again, this is not very good for taking out VTOLs, but if you can practice and get that leading down really nicely against UAVs, this is gonna be one of the most efficient methods of taking down an enemy UAV. But then finally for bolts, we have the caustic bolts, which have a mini gas grenade attached to them. And with these, they don't change our one hit kill potential at all. It's still gonna be a one shot kill anywhere but the legs. However, if you hit a target with these bolts, there will be an explosion with a cloud of gas and anybody within that area, including the target you hit, assuming you hit him in the leg, it will affect them just like a gas grenade. So this means they won't be able to aim down sight for a short period of time unless they have battle hardened, in which case they still can aim down sight. And then regardless of whether or not they have battle hardened, they won't be able to sprint while they're affected by this gas cloud. And this will affect not only the target that you hit, but any other player that gets within a radius of that, including yourself. So you have to be careful with these bolts. And it is also worth noting that these will only activate if you hit a player directly. If you shoot the ground or a wall, you'll see a little explosion of gas, but that's just an animation that doesn't actually have any effect on anyone. So overall, these gas grenades are just designed to be more of an annoyance than anything, and I don't see myself ever using them. And with that, that finally wraps it up for the breakdown of the crossbow. Now let's get into a couple example attachment combinations that I wanted to share for you guys. The first one is my aggression build. And with this, the primary goal is improving aim down sight speed. So we've got the Carbon Elite V3 arm, the VLK Laser 7 milliwatt, and the Speed Track Echo stock. Those are all great for aim down sight time. I did throw the Slimline Pro Optic on there just because I'm not a huge fan of the default iron sight on this. And then finally, we have the 28 strand cable, which improves our velocity nicely. And as you can see there, our new bolt spread is a little bit worse than base, but that's okay because we're not stretching out our gunfights with this. This is designed for close quarters engagements. However, it is worth noting our velocity is improved by 16% due to that 28 strand cable. And this is very noticeable even in closer ranges. You won't have to lead your target nearly as much. As for the second build I wanted to share for you guys, this one's much more designed around longer ranges and accuracy. So I'm treating it kind of like a sniper rifle more than anything. And with this, we have the SO Momenti arm, which gives us a great boost to our velocity and also appears to be tightening up our spread by a lot, even though it's not stated anywhere. We have the VLK Laser 7 milliwatt, the VLK4 optic, although you can swap that out for whatever optic you're comfortable with. I just feel like it fits nicely with this particular build. And then finally, the 28 strand cable. So with this setup, our aim down sight time is quite slow and therefore it's not really designed for rushing. This is more for hanging back and picking people off. However, our velocity is improved very significantly at 37%. And what this means is first up, we don't have to lead targets nearly as much. And that's something that can be really difficult to get down, especially for longer ranges. And on top of that, a faster velocity means less bolt drop over distance. So you don't have to hold over your targets nearly as high. And then finally, when we look at our bolt spread while aiming down sight, you can see the new spread with this is very nicely tightened compared to the base. 
And with that, that's gonna wrap it up for today's episode on the crossbow. As for my thoughts on this, I obviously don't think this is like a meta weapon by any means, but I really like that they added it to the game simply for variety's sake. It offers a nice challenge and a change of pace and a totally different way to approach the gameplay. And I think that's great. I think that just adds a little bit more depth and replayability overall. And that's why I really like that they added it to the game. Now, of course, these are just my thoughts on the crossbow, and I'd love to hear what you guys think about it in the comments down below. And also, if you guys have missed any of the previous episodes, I will leave a link to the playlist in the description of the video. If you enjoyed this one, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.